Good morning and welcome to my craft desk. Today we're making these fast and easy envelopes and each of these bounteous beauties is covered with collage and they're absolutely fantastic as you might guess if you love mass making. So they have collage on the front, so on the front flap here and also on the back. In fact, on this one, I've added a beautiful vellum butterfly. I printed these in a video the other week. Each of these is made from a single book page. So just a basic book. It's not even a vintage one. So I'm just tearing pages out of this. You can sew these or you can glue them. So don't think you have to have a sewing machine. You can glue around the sides here if you want to. And they are brilliant for beginners because there's nothing complex about these. In fact, you can use really basic supplies, mix and match all sorts of things. A bit of vellum here, scrap paper here, packing paper here, washi tape, labels, paint. Just get immersed and escape the world and have some fun making these fast and easy envelopes with me. I have, as usual, continuing the theme of making things easy, my process steps, which will be, as usual, on a board on my Pinterest page. So you can go and get those, look at them, download them, save them, share them. Pull up a chair, craft with me, and let's make some really fantastic, fast and easy little envelopes. So we're going to use book pages to make something a bit like this. And of course, they will vary according to the supplies that you have. But one of the benefits of this design is it really does accommodate all sorts of different supplies. So whatever you've got, it's a great way for immersing yourself in just using things up, but maybe doing things in your own style and adding texture like this fabric here and mixing up washi and a stamp with bits of paper, just yum. So what we need is our book page and I don't necessarily have access to lots of vintage book pages, but I do have some that masquerade a bit like that. They look a little bit yellowing. So let's have, let's have a few of these. And in fact, while we have a bit of time together, let me just show you what to do. When I've torn a few out, I tend to build up this ridge here. So I'll take a sharp knife and with it pointing away, do be safe pointing it away, tear away this little flap here and make life easy by just taking that off. What I'm doing is putting the, the knife absolutely flat, as flat as possible, on the paper and actually putting pressure downwards, not just in that direction. And every now and again I just take off some of that glue and it makes it easier to tear out the pages. There we go, just get that going. So it makes it a lot easier to tear out the pages without having too much of a jaggedy edge to the left. It doesn't matter if it's not super tidy. And then I can just more easily go for tearing out maybe even 10 pages at once for a project like this. So, I'll tell you how big they are as well. I decided I wanted to do this project because I felt like I wanted to do something with a bit of repetition where I could make quite a few at once and this just sort of fits the bill. It is 15 centimetres, which is about six inches, by nine inches and that's just over 23 centimetres. But of course use whatever book page you want. What we're going to do to start with is the folding. So we've chosen a book page and moderately thick helps, particularly if you want to sew. So if you do want to sew around this, when you come to sewing the flap, if you haven't got any double thickness, I think you want to have relatively thick book page to sew on in the first place. Or of course you could glue two together. I like to just use a single book page and it seems to work. So we'll do the folding to create the envelope. And I start with 
a fold at the bottom and I'm going to go about for a piece of paper this size about five centimeters so it's not a small flap the idea is so remember we're folding from the bottom up the idea is that when we turn this round and fold the bottom up again almost to that crease that we made not as not quite up to it give yourself a bit of a one centimeter gap press that down let's give it some good crease marks I want the top flap to have quite a big say in how it looks on the front let me show you on a finished one so I don't I personally like a flap that's got quite a bit of substance and so for me I'm folding so it comes almost almost halfway so you maybe want between a third and a halfway down when this flap is down so you can do it by eye but to me that looks about right and of course we could do this with several pages so if I was to do another just fold it up about there you will get quicker at this as you do a few just fold that one up what we end up with is text in the right direction so if you want to mass make pull out quite a few pages and do your folding what I would also suggest if you want to mass make is at this point we do just a bit of trimming of the flap so the quickest way I know and I've done this with maybe up to five sheets at once with your papers quite neatly held just take a pair of scissors and cut off a nice chunk off the corner which means these will be symmetrical and also be exactly the same. So that is all ready for our fast and easy envelopes. The book page chosen, the folding and the corners cut, which means hey ho, we're ready to move on to the collage. I've laid out quite a bit of stuff on my desk and I thought the easiest way to show you some of these things that I'm going to be using today, and of course, use whatever you have, is to just show you what's on my desk and maybe point at a few things. So I've started with the book pages that we just tore out and folded. I obviously have my scissors ready. I've got a couple of pieces or a little collection here of washi tape, which I think might be useful. And I'm particularly enjoying using some of these very fine ones with a bit of gold detail. These came in a delivery from the washi tape shop and I might have a discount code for that down below. I've got a print already done of a selection of butterflies because I think these work really well on the back. I'm going to have a play with those. That's the trifold I made the other week. I'm going to reach into my box of foiled washi because I think that adds drama in contrast to the matte book pages. I've got my glues ready. Some of these are under test, we'll be reporting soon. I've got some labels. And then as we move over to the left here, I have some packing paper that I've already daubed with gold paint. And that's great for putting behind some of your images on these sorts of projects. I've got a little bit of my scrappy, messy snippet, which I made the other week when I was trying to chomp through some of my scraps. I've done an, a video on organisation and that was in that video so I'll leave a link to that one down below too. And one of the things I want to try today is combining some beautiful text on some images with scrappy bits of paper which are in my box over there and there I've been cutting out quite a few little extra labels and numbers and all sorts so that's my pot of goodies to dip into. So I'll start with maybe a piece of paper a little bit from here. Now this is from a gorgeous set, a digital, which I do like using. I like mixing digitals and other pieces of paper, book pages in particular, but it has this gorgeous font on it. And I think this project, this fast and easy envelope lends itself superbly well to anything you've got with text on. So I thought I'd have a play with that. 
and maybe mix it up with some of these other goodies like my stamp here and my washi tape. So I'm going to tear one of these down, start by tearing it in half and I think I will start with decorating the front of this envelope. Let's see, I'm going to get that on it somehow. So let's see where we need to do our tearing. I'll use every piece of anything that I tear off here. There's nothing going to be wasted. I think that will work well. Maybe up there, maybe up there. Let's tear off this rather blank piece at the top. I might use that on the back. So, and I don't really want to cut these either. I like the rougher edge. This doesn't go all the way across and that's perfect because it gives me space to decorate on the side as well. I'm also going to leave just a little bit of a gap around here. So I need my pencil to make a mark. As you can see, it is a messy desk. I'm all right with that. It's, it's kind of inspiration as I craft. I don't know, do you have a, a messy desk and does it help as you're actually crafting? I'm getting better at organising my scraps, but let me know what your desk looks like while you're in full flow. I think we'll have that on there. I think if you wanted to do mass making, you could do these in steps. So you could do all your collage, you could do all of your cutting and folding to begin with, that sort of thing. That would definitely speed things up. I've done a bit of that and effectively done this in batches of five. That seems to work. So that can go on there. And I wonder if I can use a bit of my snippet, or is this too wide? Let's have a look. So this is great for adding texture and indeed a little bit of fun. I wonder if that could go on there. It might go. I think that will go on the back. What I'll do is add some of my foiled washi on the front, which I think is fantastic. Adds a sense of luxury, doesn't it? Ironic for a junk journaler. It's just, might be a bit long. I'm going to put that on there. Maybe tear off at the top. That's good. And I'm also going to add a stamp. I like variety. So I do like projects where we get to play with a few different things. So I think what I'll do, I want to just take down that edge. It's not straight. Those of you who've spotted, it's all a little bit wiggly as well. Let's see what we can do. I think the gold is good with that script. And if anybody knows what that script is called, let me know. It looks sort of medieval, doesn't it? Do you think? Maybe something like that. And take it down to something a bit more dainty and narrow. I'm going to put that just over the edge of my washi so I break up that straight line. I'm feeling happier about that. And I'm going to add just a bit of a delicate stamp. And I'm using a dark green Whispers Archival ink. I don't want this to be too bold or compete with the black of the font. And that could just go, yeah, that can just go on there and it's overlapping the packing paper and the washi and adds a bit more detail. I'm going to have a go with my gold flecked washi tape, which is super dainty. I hadn't really seen anything like this until recently. I didn't know it existed. I've got the gold to the outside. I'll just have one of those. And again, I think that goes really well with this delicate text. I really like that. So I've got something done on the front. I think I'll just move to the back. And for this, I definitely want to have a play with my butterflies. So I think I'll just cut one of these out. So I had a go at printing with my printer a few weeks ago. The first time I've printed on vellum. This is thin vellum. 
and I really wouldn't go any thinner. It was just really a bit of experimentation. But I had a go and I printed a few different sorts of things and it does seem to work if, if you've only got thin vellum, which is, let's be honest, a bit cheaper, if you attach it to a piece of copy paper in a particular way. So I'll link that video down below if you fancy having a play at creating your own little vellum images. I am aware from the comments, and your comments are absolutely fantastic by the way, and really, really appreciate it when you comment and talk to me. That'd be fantastic. If you chat away to me in the comments down below and to each other, and let me know what sort of things you're up to, and also what you like. Let me know what you like. What are you enjoying making at the moment? Right. So I want this on here, but I want maybe a bit more of this underneath. So get some of that on. Really like this glue. So it's a new one that I'm experimenting with because I thought it was time to test a few out. And this one at the moment is really working for me. And I'll be honest, I probably prefer it to the Uhu, but I will report back and I'm going to test quite a few. So I think I'll have something from one of my other scrap boxes, BDI on that, maybe a bit of music paper. So I might have and take a little bit of that, run it under there, maybe that way. That looks really nice, doesn't it? Take off that, then I can see all of the notes. Get that on. I like to put glue not quite to the edge of my pieces of collage as I'm adding them, which helps me layer things like that. Now if I add my butterfly, what do we think? Does that bring it all together? I'm failing to use my little snippet roll, but we can't always get everything on. I feel a bit greedy about adding all of these things, but, oops, getting glue everywhere. I cut the butterfly out, fly out with a bit of spare vellum around the edge of it. So I didn't spend too long going into all the detail. It's quite a big butterfly this. And it's very efficient, the printing, because I have a whole page from Tracy Fox of those butterflies, which means I can just print one page and get lots of butterflies out of one page of print. That's okay, isn't it? What do we think? I think I need something just to add a bit more detail. Shall we have a look in that pot? What have we got? And it's also very brown. Is there anything that I can add? It's a bit of contrast. I don't know what I've been cutting. Does that add anything? I don't want to compete. It's too big, isn't it? Got some of my own little artwork in here. So I painted, scanned. Oh, he's quite cute. Might add one of those. And a little bit of text, right, like that. So a little bit of toadstool. Who knew that we needed that? I think the red works really well, along with the black of the butterfly. And I don't know, that might be it. A little bit in there, is that too much? Too much? Is that too much? Don't do, there we go, take off the end. Let's just have a little bit sneaky peeking out. That can go in there. And we'll move on to collaging the flap. Yeah, happy with that. It really is a place for escapism, this project. And I'm finding it quite valuable as a way of relaxing. I don't know about you just wanting to be calm and immerse myself in some of these projects. So go on the front and for the front we have text the correct way up 
and I'm just going to add a little bit but still let the text shine through. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of fabric so we get some texture on here. So you see the lots and lots of variety of things that you can add to this. Just cut a piece off that. I probably need some fabric glue, but I don't think I have any. So I'll add a goodly amount of my Q Connect glue stick. And I like to have that just down there at the edge of the flap. And I'm going to have a label up here. I'm thinking what colour. Probably, probably neutral. I think that's quite a nice one with some digits on. Just not too much, so it doesn't compete with the beautiful images on the front here. I'll put that down. I'm going to take my washi, run that along the top. So I'm not putting too much of this washi on every single page, but just bringing it together. Of course you don't need to. One of the things I'm trying to do a bit more of in my videos these days is be, I guess, more transparent, more more visible about the things that I do or even the things I get wrong. And what I did do the other day was tear out lots of book pages and fold them the wrong way. So rather than putting the flap, which we want at the top, being a fold from the bottom, I went ahead and did a whole load of folding of the flap at the top. I end up with text the wrong way up. So all is not lost. What I did, and if you want to, I can show you how I made these, but I just want to show you how you can turn any mistake into something that's a bit of fun. I just turned them into faux envelopes that are actually pockets. So I glued down the front flap. I added collage. I added a bit of a hinge, as you can see, and you get a faux envelope from the front, but that would go beautifully on a page. And again, I just had a whole load of fun collaging these, adding all sorts, and they're just, they're just addictive really, and great for using up your book pages. So that was just an example of something where make, getting it wrong is not the end of it, and you can definitely just keep going. So having added a whole load of collage, what you want to do at this stage with our little fast and easy envelope is seal or sew around the side. Let me show you on one that's done. So on this one, what I have done is sew from the bottom left here all the way around. And I've done it in a pale thread in a small running stitch back down to here. I give it a bit of forward and backwards here and at the end and I don't mind that this means that the stitches are on the back. We're seeing the back of the stitch when we fold the flap down here. I, I run the stitches through any of the items that are on the flap, particularly the fabric, which is why I put the fabric near to the edge. And it gives it a robustness, it really does. And I think it works incredibly well. I just really enjoy doing about five or so of these at once. You could, of course, run some glue just down the side here and down the side here. Make it a strong glue and that would give you a very, very similar result. You don't have to use a sewing machine on this project. I've made a lot. I wondered if you wanted to just see one or two of them. So I'll just spend a second or so running you through some of the examples I've already made. So this one is a super colourful one. Uh, it's a slightly smaller book page. You can see I've got the foiled washi on again and a label. I don't have a butterfly on this one. I do have fabric on the flap there and you can see I've done a bit of stamping on the back. I've added a little bit of a faux postage stamp there and some postage stamp marks. That was fun. This one has washi horizontally, a little bit of scrap paper that was in my box. Fabric here, really nice and colourful and one of those larger butterflies on the back. I've added a label and I've sewn these. This one, ah, now this is an example with a bit of the snippet. So I've got some beautiful snippet here on the left, some more of the Rockwell Designs papers, 
I've done some stamping on the top. I really like that on the back. My little cherubs, beautiful. This one's a bit more colourful. I really like the red in this, how jolly is that? Some more fabric on the flap and just using my scraps on the back of that one. Here's a bit more of those cherubs, some more Amazon packing paper with gold and some more scrap on the back. I've got some snippet on this one, lovely little butterfly. See it works so easily and it's so easy to run up quite a few. A bit more of that text on that one and a super large butterfly. This last one here I've used a bit more of the vellum on the front. It works well when you sew through it and it's so delicate you can see the book page behind. Slightly larger one with a botanical bit of scrap paper there, that scrapbook paper. I think I've stamped on that. Added some extra papers on the flap and there is some scrap collage on the back. Here are the process steps if you'd like to have a go at making these fast and easy collage envelopes yourself. And if you have enjoyed this project, then check out my video where I make this three pocket pouch using book pages and scraps. It's so much fun, so absorbing. I hope to see you soon.